Horses look like they're gone, but Baz will always find something extra find something with them. So, yeah. yeah, I think you'll suit him. Yes, I just can't have him at the moment, Pete. I really can't. I'm disappointed in the horse the way yeah. he's sort of raced lately. I hope you're rolling your videotape at home there because we just saw an interesting piece of television. We actually saw Richard Friedman not saying anything for 30 seconds. <laughs> That's so, incredible. I might just not say anything for the rest of the show. Oh, you're going to get like that, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> On to number 17, Sky Bow, another horse that's been placed in the Melbourne Cup. Len Smith is the trainer and Larry Cassidy is the jockey. Barrier 12, 52 and a half kilos, six wins from 45 starts. Can you get up there in the placings again, Jennifer? Well, he's done it before, Pete, and uh, he's been racing quite well. I thought his run in the Mooney Valley Cup was pretty good. Yeah, he got there along the inside and he was running on at the end. He's a genuine 3,200-metre horse as well. Um, I'd say he's a place chance. I don't think he's hopeless. All right. Well, here's one of the controversial inclusions into the Melbourne Cup field, number 18, Yorkshire. Is trained by Paul Cole. The rider will be Danny Nicolick. He comes from a nice gate in barrier number 10. 52 and a half kilos. He's only had the 12 starts and he's won two of them. His recent performances read like this and you can see there he started over 4,430 metres at Ascot and ran second three runs ago. Uh, so he shouldn't have any problems with the trip. He's been over it twice uh, for one placing. And to talk more about Yorkshire's chances and also the controversy which has been going on throughout the week, I'm happy to say we're joined at Sandown by Paul Cole. Paul, welcome to Australia. Morning. Uh, there has been a lot of controversy. You must first of all be delighted that you're in the field after all the toing and froing that's gone on. Um, well, I think it's. Uh, I think it's, the whole thing's worked out very well because luckily we, you know, we got into the race without any sort of too much juggling. Um, I don't. I think the controversy has been sort of slightly, you know, over, overstated and overblown because, um, you know, there's supposed to be a lot of aggro between me and Les Benton. It's none at all. He's been most cooperative, and uh, you know, I think we should tidy up the, the, the loose ends with regard to coming all this way and not running. But I mean, it's a new concept. This race for foreigners and things like that, and you're sure to have small hiccups. And it's been ironed out very well. I'm, I'm very happy with the whole situation. Well, this is the perfect opportunity to tidy it up. We just saw a shot of your horse working there at Sandown. So, uh, some of the reported comments in the newspaper this week were slightly exaggerated. Uh, well, yes, regarding the, um, you know, the angry and the storm and the upset, that's all nonsense at all. I, I get on extremely well with Les Bent, and I think he's doing a very, very good job from his point of view. You get the, some trainers are obviously a bit worried that. Horses might come in and win their races, and, and they're bound to say things. But on the international concept, you've got a unique race here, the, the two-mile race. And it could well develop into one of the world's great races. I mean, it's just uh, slightly narrow-minded to sort of try and, you know, keep it in, in very few hands. What would you say to the connections of horses like Bridleman and Bolter, the local horses who were left out of the field so that your horse could be included? Well, as, tra as, as trainers, um, you always get balloted out of races all over the world and, and in England and anywhere else. I mean, if you've got to enter your horse in the Japan Cup and it doesn't get in, you, you don't start whinging and whining about it, oh, my horse is not in the Japan Cup. It happens all the time. I mean, us trainers have to put up with these things. And if you get in, you get in. If you don't get in, you go somewhere else. Well, finally, let's talk about the horse. I've seen a couple of tapes of his races. He looks as though he would stay all day. Yes, he's, he's been a difficult horse to train. He's had great potential and he's put in one or two fantastic race course performances. He's been slightly, uh, he has allergies, he's had the old ulcers and his blood's been difficult. He's a sound horse and he gets the trip and he's got speed, he's got a turn of foot. If he's r right on the day, he's one of the serious contenders. Paul, thanks for your time this afternoon and we look forward to catching up with you at Flemington on Tuesday. Paul Cole, the trainer of Yorkshire, joining us from Sandown this afternoon. Interesting comments there. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, I think we're going to hear a lot more of this in the lead up to the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Let's go on to second coming now. And a horse that has finally struck some form, the Derby winner of last year, trained by Michael Moroni. Eddie Wilkinson has the sit, barrier 13, 52 kilos. He's won three of 21, one of those, of course, the Derby last year. But since then, really, he uh, hasn't fired a shot until yesterday, Rich, and it was a much improved performance. Rich? Oh. You want, to, you want me to talk? He's not yeah, talking. Don't mind. Right. Do you want me to talk? Well, actually, it? second coming has gone that. pretty well yesterday, I thought. It was yeah. a pretty good run, to be quite honest. He fires at Flemington, which is a, 
you know, something you need to do to win a Melbourne Cup, obviously. But, uh, look, his form's been a little inconsistent. I'd like to have seen him coming in with some consistent form, so, uh, you Did know, I can't question see him. that form from yesterday as well? Well, He had possibly. the blinkers on yesterday again, I think, you'll yeah, find. Well, you know, uh, as I say, bit. it's inconsistent, his form, and I think you need to be, have consistent form to be a Melbourne Cup chance. We've got 19 down, we've got five to go, and very shortly we're going to be having a look at one horse, which... Probably hardly anyone has ever heard of, and it may win the Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Down the bottom. Have a look in your form, guys. We'll be back with you to talk about that in just a moment. Saintly winning the Melbourne Cup in 1996, giving Bart Cummings his 10th Melbourne Cup winner. Will it be 11 come Tuesday? We'll be talking about that very subject in just a moment. But first of all, let's go on to Ancient City, trained by Colin Alderson, who really has had a very up and down spring carnival. Jockey is Brett Preble, barrier number 11. He's got a nice weight of 51 kilos, six wins from 16 starts, and his recent performances, Johnny highlighted by that win in the Geelong Cup. I thought that was a good win, Pete. Um, I think if we go through the statistics of the barriers in the Melbourne Cup, I think 11's won the most. I'm not sure of that. I could be said yeah, to be it's up there. on that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Colin last night, actually. He's very happy with the horse. He said he was home in the stable yesterday. He galloped yesterday morning, he said, and he galloped. Brilliant. He gives him a good chance in the race. And B. Preble is in form. Double yeah. yesterday. Might be one of big odds with a bit of a hope. Well, here's one that's going to attract a lot of attention simply because of her name. Champagne. Laurie Laxon is the trainer. He's already won a Melbourne Cup with Empire Rose. Can he do it 10 years later on? Glenn Boss is the rider. Barrier 18. 51 kilos is a great weight for her. She's won six times from 17 starts and, of course, was a slashing winner in the McKinnon yesterday, Jen. But the 3,200 metre uh, statistic there could be the telling factor. Yes, well, you can see her just going past uh, the international horse there. How do we pronounce that? And it's marvellous. <laughs> I'd hate to make a mistake there. Uh, champagne. And look at, her, as well. yes. <laughs> look at her zoom to the lead and a very impressive win now. Can she run the distance? That's the big query, and she's got 51 kilos there. Um, I've got a feeling she could run a place, Peter. I think she's a definitely, a, definitely a chance with that light weight after that win. I, I reckon she's she too brilliant. No. Well, I don't think she run the trip. I think she's a brilliant 2,000 metre horse. A couple of placings at 2,400 metres. She's in the blinkers for the first time yesterday, I believe. Yeah, she was That's rich, it. and she, yeah. uh, she, she really fired up yesterday because, yeah. and I think the Mel she that might hard have, after it. She did when we put up after the race. I was the first one alongside her actually, and uh, I thought, you know, it's taken a bit out of her yesterday. Yeah. I thought that mare. You know. The only one blowing harder than Champagne was Letsy because he was back in the. <laughs> Saddle aboard Banjo yesterday, reunited with his old mate. Let's move on to Jezebel now, number 22. This horse is a proven stayer. Brian Jenkins, the trainer. Chris Munz takes the ride. Gate 16. And uh, down on the 51 kilo mark, there are a few chances on that weight. Six wins from 25 starts. And the recent performances, well, you've got to forget about the performance in the Caulfield Cup because Richard... Uh, the 200 metre mark, it looked as though it was going to visit the car park. The, the inside car park yes. too, it was going to go over the inside rail. Now, she's a six year old mare, they probably don't have the greatest record in the race, but she, her form this spring has been very consistent and the run in the Caulfield Cup was very good, as were her previous runs, so I'm giving her an outside chance. I yeah. really do like her form coming into this. Yeah, I think she's got a good hope at big odds. Now, on to a horse that has everyone talking at the moment. If they're not now, they will be by Tuesday, <laughs> I'll tell you. Bart Cummings trains perpetual check, which will be having just its 13th start in the Melbourne Cup. Lenny Beasley sits on. Barrier number five, 50 and a half kilos, and this horse, well, look at the recent performances. It was racing in restricted age races, ran 10th and 4th, but the win in the Tattersall's Cup at Randwick over 2,400 metres was something to behold, 
And I reckon, Jen, this horse has got a chance in the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> You've been out there. Um, that must have been very hot, those lights yesterday. Are you yeah. laughing at Bart Cummings? <laughs> I'm not laughing at Bart Cummings, I'm no, laughing at you. No, I right? wouldn't do. When he won the Tats Cup, this horse, there was a super highway down the middle of the track where he finished off. It was about eight lengths better than all the other runners on the fence. I'm not saying it wasn't a bad win. It was a good win. He's got a great trainer. And no one would know better than Bart whether he could win a race like this, but I just don't think he's got the form. Jen, I was talking I to agree. you a minute ago. Well, I actually, you said it all. I tend to agree with Richard there. Sorry, Pete. Of course. All right. <laughs> Do your own show there. Do uh, I the... get a comment on that? No. Thank you. The Amy Victoria Derby <laughs> winner, Arena, is the last horse in the Melbourne Cup. Number 24, John Hawkes, the trainer, of course. Corey Brown will ride, as John said before, at 47 and a half kilos. He's got a beautiful draw in gate four, four wins from 12 <coughs> starts, and a brilliant performance to win the Amy Victoria Derby yesterday after a third in the Norman Robinson and a third in the Spring Champion. It's a big ask for a three year old. Is he up to it, Jen? A three year old hasn't won the Cup since 1941. No, well, as we uh, talk about him, let's have a look at the Victoria Derby from yesterday. He's in those pink colours on the inside and this was a ride and a half by Larry Cassidy. Great okay, effort there. Uh, nothing like a Dane ran second in a Melbourne Cup as a three-year-old. Yes, yeah. but then He's he not far away. Yeah, you, and uh, octagonal that year. Yeah. I just think the form then was better than it is this year. I think we haven't got a great bumper crop of three-year-olds. Gee, another so, year on this horse, he could be another I mean, yeah. I'm not taking Couldn't anything he? away from his win there. I just, I just wonder whether or not I he's quite like good enough. I just don't like the theory of running two-year-olds in a Melbourne Cup, mm. and, and he'll be a two-year-old when he runs. Well, John Hawkes is a very astute trainer, though, and I'll obviously he's given yes. it a fair yes. bit of thought. <laughs> I'm not second-guessing him. I just think it's a... It's and at the moment, tough. the Hawks' ball is rolling, isn't it? It is indeed. Very well. Mm. Well, will it continue to roll on Tuesday? That's the feel for the Foster's Melbourne Cup of 1998. We'll take a break and we'll come back and get the selections of the experts and see what the bookmakers have made of it after last night's barrier draw. I hope you're enjoying a drop of the bubbly this afternoon as you watch our big preview of Melbourne Cup Day 1998. He's a length in front. Linesman won't lay down. Grandmaster runs on and here's Doremus. Doremus with a run. Then came Markham and Sapio. Might and Power the leader. Two feet to go. Doremus is after him. Might and Power led a length and a half to Doremus. Then Linesman. Might and Power the leader. Doremus is coming at him. Doremus after Might and Power. Might and Power and Doremus lay in it. Oh, it's close. Doremus runs. Doremus runs from the outside. Can he have done it a second time? It's a fight. Yes, one of the most dramatic finishes in Melbourne Cup history 12 months ago. Welcome back to our special preview of the 1998 Melbourne Cup and I'm happy to say that we have been able to track down Les Benton and he joins us live from Sandown Park. Les, you've um, had an interesting morning out there. Oh yes, Peter, it was interesting. There was a media conference here this morning and um, it was quite uh, interesting with... Uh, with the connections of all horses, a couple of jockeys, um, and of course Lord Colin Cowdery was here. Well, you're not exactly Mr Popularity with everyone at the moment. I've got to ask you, have you made a mistake including those horses? Oh, look, uh, Peter, that's not my decision. The VRC committee make uh, a decision, used its discretion in determining the final field. There were 32 accept, final acceptors. Uh, the safety limit's 24. Eight horses had to be eliminated. The committee... Um, uh, deliberated for over an hour in determining the final field, used its, its discretion and the field was chosen. What would you, as someone from the VRC, say to the connections of horses like Bridal Man and Bulter? Oh, look, uh, it's not for me to say, Peter. It's obviously disappointing for any uh, the connections of any horse that have balloted out. But as um, others have said here um, today uh, at the press conference, uh, there's ballots taking place in races all over the world. It's very, very disappointing for anyone to have a horse balloted out of a race. Thanks for your time this afternoon. And I look forward to catching up with you on Tuesday. Good on you, Pete. Bye-bye. Les Benton joining us from Sandown. Interesting comments. And you're vitally concerned with this. What's your opinion? Well, I just think that uh, what happened is not entirely Les's fault. And he's, he's been made handle all the press and he's taking all the bullets for this. And, you know, he's only an employee of the VRC. There are probably a lot more people involved in this international controversy, horse controversy. Um, the conditions of the race weren't updated 
to before all these international horses started coming. And this is where you've run into the problem. The rules have had to be bent then to get them in the field. Now, Les has probably been hung out to dry, I think, a little bit here. And uh, there are probably a few more people in the VRC and other, maybe other clubs that were involved in all of this who've... Uh, who've kept a pretty low profile, and I don't think it's quite fair on Les. Speaker Richard Friedman, and why don't you come out and say what you really think, <laughs> uh, The weather forecast, this is good news. There's no controversy about this. Track good, rail true, weather fine. That's a good combination. And a top temperature expected of 27 degrees. Do you reckon we have any chance of topping the 100,000 mark there? I'm backing it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. good chance, I would say, Pete, yeah. with the crowds that they've After been getting. After yesterday, I'm backing more than, more than 80 on Oaks Day, I reckon. Mm. It'll be a huge day, Oaks Day. It'll be fun. Let's have a look at the latest betting as it stands after last night's barrier draw. Faithful Son, I think he's entitled to be the favourite at 9 to 2, Jen. I was interested to hear Jim McGrath's comments, though, before. Yes, uh, I suppose a lot of people have lost um, their faith in Frankie de Tori. We, you know, he, he, he hasn't wrote... ridden many good races since, no. since he's been coming to Australia, yeah. but I, mean, I think he's about overdue to, to ride right. a good race. That's right. He won this. He's yeah. a great jockey. Yeah. Nine to two chance. There's going to be a lot of money on this horse each way. Yeah. A lot of money. There's Arena, the Derby winner at eight to one. Do you think he's under the odds? I think he is. Mm. Yeah, I think he's a little under the odds as well. I think Ty the Knot's probably a little under the odds. And there's uh, probably horses like Sheer Danzig, well over the odds. And there's that horse perpetual check that's got absolutely no hope whatsoever, and it's mm. only twelve to one. Strange about that. Yeah, well, Let's have a look in. at the second page. <laughs> that's your money. Jezebel at fourteens. Uh, Smith, he's good odds. Yeah, he's good odds for a horse with consistent form. Champagne, I think she's about a right odds. Yippee yo he should be out the gate. Uh, the Hind should be out there with him. Sheer Danzig, I think he's a, he's uh, a little overs at the moment. Should three crowns is under two at 20 to one. about oh, his right oh, odds, isn't it? 20 to one mark him if he does strike form. <laughs> three crowns. Skybo's good each way better at 20 to one. Well, let's have a look for those of you who like the outsiders. Gold Guru, 33 to one. I'll give him a little bit of a mm, fluking hope. Not the worst. Yeah. I find it hard in this last half dozen, Pete, to sort of bring them into the race. Yeah, I think yeah. they're all at their right odds. Mm. OK, so there is the field of 24. <laughs> From the four bookmakers. <laughs> <laughs> now it is time to get the tips. And, of course, ladies first, <clears throat> Jenny Chapman. I'm going for the mares to run the Cornella here, Peter. And I do think it's a very open field here. Number 22, Jezebel. From number 21, Champagne. And number two, Faithful Son. And my best outsider, I'm going to have something on him Small, each way, 14, jaw sticks. Well. And I'm not on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Many have speculated over the years. Yeah. Rich? Well, I tell you what, I'm going with Faithful Son. I think he will run the trip in Australia. Um, I, I, I think Doremus will push his walking frame down the middle of the track <laughs> there and, and run second. And, and I've liked Jezebel all the way through, so I'm sticking with her. Best outsider, Torfin's Melody, Mel the Caulfield Cup winner. Let's see. Well, I, I do like the favourite, Pete. I think he can win the race. Um, Faithful son, I think Jezebel's a great chance uh, for the Quinella Arena. He's he very good when you say, and the Hind is my best outsider. I'm with you, John. I think Faithful son can win the Melbourne Cup, and uh, his performance in the Caulfield Cup I thought was outstanding. Old Doremus, I'd love to see him get up there. What a story it'd be! Perpetual check, I've put in for third, and Aero Smith around the 12, 14 to one mark is my best outsider. Hopefully, that's made the picture a little bit clearer for you. For Tuesday, I look forward to seeing you I'm then. I'm totally yes. confused. You're going to join us, or are you going to be in the marquee all day? Uh, a bit of both. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, uh, I'll be there on banjo. I'll be there on banjo, and I hope you'll be there on Tuesday when we present our great race, the Fosters Melbourne Cup, to a worldwide audience in around 60 countries. It is one of the truly great sporting moments every year. I hope you'll share us with it, uh, share it with us on Tuesday. I would like to personally...